the suffering of Christ your Son, you have saved us all from the death we inherited from sinful Adam. By the law of nature, we have borne the likeness of his manhood. May the sanctifying power of grace help us to put on the likeness of our Lord in heaven, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. See, my servant shall prosper. He shall be raised high and greatly exalted, even as many were amazed at him. So marred was his look beyond human semblance, and his appearance beyond that of the sons of man. So shall he startle many nations. Because of him, kings shall stand speechless. Those who have not been told shall see. Those who have not heard shall ponder it. Who would believe what we have heard? To whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up like a sapling before him, like a shoot from the parched earth. There was in him no stately bearing to make us look at him, nor appearance that would attract us to him. He was spurned and avoided by people, a man of suffering, accustomed to infirmity, and of those from whom people hide their faces, spurned, and we held him in no esteem. But it was our infirmities that he bore, our sufferings that he endured, for we thought of him as stricken, as when smitten by God and afflicted. He was pierced for our offenses, crushed for our sins. Upon him was the chastisement that makes us whole, and by his stripes we were healed. We had all gone astray like sheep, each following his own way. But the Lord laid upon him the guilt of us all. Though he was harshly treated, he submitted and opened not his mouth. Like a lamb led to the slaughter, or a sheep before the shears. He was silent, but not his mouth. Oppressed and condemned, he was taken away. Who would have thought any more of his destiny? And he was cut off from the land of the living and smitten for the sins of his people. A grave was assigned him among the wicked, and a burial place with the evildoers. For he had done no wrong, nor spoken any falsehood. But the Lord was pleased to crush him in infirmity. If he gives his life as an offering for sin, he shall see his descendants in a long life. And the will of the Lord shall be accomplished through him. Because of his affliction, he shall see the light and fullness of days. Through his suffering, my servant shall justify many. And their guilt he shall bear. Therefore I will give him his portion among the great, and he shall divide the spoils with the mighty. Because he surrendered himself to death, and was counted among the wicked. And he shall take away the sins of many, and win pardon for their offenses. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. In you, O Lord, I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your justice, rescue me. Into your hands I commend my spirit. You will redeem me, O Lord, O faithful God. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. For all my foes, I am an object of reproach, a laughing stock to my neighbors and a dread to my friends. They who see me abroad flee from me. I am forgotten like the unremembered dead. I am like a dish that is broken. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. The 
But my trust is in you, O Lord. I say you are my God. In your hands is my destiny. Rescue me from the clutches of my enemies and my persecutors. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your kindness. Take courage and be stout-hearted, all you who hope in the Lord. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has similarly been tested in every way yet without sin. So let us confidently approach the throne of grace to receive mercy and to find grace for timely help. In the days when Christ was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. He was heard because of his reverence. Son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. When he was made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Christ became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every other name. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Jesus went out with his disciples across the Kidron Valley to where there was a garden, into which he and his disciples entered. Judas, his betrayer, also knew the place, because Jesus had often met there with the disciples. So, Jesus, so Judas got a band of soldiers and guards from the chief priests and the Pharisees and went there with lanterns, torches, and weapons. Jesus, knowing everything that was going to happen to him, went out to him and said to them, whom are you seeking? They answered him, Jesus, the Nazarene. He said to them, I am. Jesus, his betrayer, was also there with him. When he said to them, I am, they turned away and fell to the ground. So again he asked them, Whom are you looking for? They said, Jesus, the Nazarene. Jesus answered, I told you that I am. So if you are looking for me, let these men go. This was to fulfill what he had said. I have not lost any of those you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it, struck the high priest's slave and cut off his right ear. The slave's name was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword into its scabbard. Shall I not drink the cup that the Father gave me? So the band of soldiers, the tribune, and the Jewish guard seized Jesus, bound him, and brought him to Annas first. He was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was high priest that year. It was Caiaphas who had counseled the Jews that it were better that one man should die rather than the people. Simon Peter and another disciple followed Jesus. Now the other disciple was known to the high priest, and he entered the courtyard of the high priest with Jesus. But Peter stood at the gate outside. So the other disciple, the acquaintance of the high priest, went out and spoke to the gatekeeper and brought Peter in. Then the maid who was the gatekeeper's, was the gatekeeper said to Peter, Are you not one of these man's disciples? He said, I am not. Now the slaves and the guards were standing around a charcoal fire and they, that they had made because it was cold and they were warming themselves. Peter was standing there also, keeping warm. 
The high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and about his doctrine. Jesus answered him, I have spoken publicly to the world. I have always taught in a synagogue or in the temple area where all the Jews gather, and in secret I have said nothing. Why ask me? Ask those who heard me what I said to them. They know what I said. When he had said this, one of the temple guards standing there struck Jesus and said, Is this the way you answer the high priest? Jesus answered him, If I have spoken wrongly, testify to the wrong. But if I have spoken rightly, why do you strike me? Then Annas sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing there keeping warm, and they said to him, Are you not one of his disciples? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the slaves of the high priest, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, said, Didn't I see you in the garden with him? Again Peter denied it, and immediately the cock crowed. When they brought Jesus from Caiaphas to the praetorium, it was morning, and they themselves did not enter the praetorium in order not to be defiled so that they could eat the Passover. So Pilate came out to them and said, What charge do you bring against this man? They answered and said to him, If he were not a criminal, we would not have handed him over to you. At this Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him according to your law. The Jews answered him, We do not have the right to execute anyone in order that the word of Jesus might be fulfilled, that he said indicating the kind of death he would die. So Pilate went back into the praetorium and summoned Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you say this on your own, or have others told you about me? Pilate answered, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom does not belong to this world. If my kingdom did belong to this world, my attendants would be fighting to keep me from being handed over. But as it is, my kingdom is not here. So Pilate said to him, Then you are a king. Jesus answered, You say I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Pilate said to him, What is truth? When he had said this, he again went out to the Jews and said to them, I find no guilt in him, but you have a custom that I release one prisoner to you at Passover. Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? They cried out again, Not this one, but Barabbas. Barabbas was a revolutionary. And Pilate took Jesus and had him scourged. And the soldiers wove a crown out of thorns and placed it on his head and clothed him in a purple cloak. And they said to him, Hail, King of the Jews. And they struck him repeatedly. Once more Pilate went out and said to them, Look, I am bringing him out to you, so that you may know that I find no guilt in him. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple cloak. And he said to them, Behold the man. When the chief priests and the guards saw him, they cried out, Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no guilt in him. The Jews answered, We have a law, and according to the law he ought to die. Because he made himself the Son of God. When Pilate heard this statement, he became even more afraid, and he went back into the praetorium and said to Jesus, Where are you from? Jesus did not answer him. Pilate said to him, Do you not speak to me? Do you not know that I have the power to release you, and I have the power to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You would have no power over me, if it had not been given to you from above. For this reason, the one who handed me over to you has the greater sin. Consequently, Pilate tried to release him, but the Jews cried out, If you release him, you are not a friend of Caesar. 
Everyone who makes himself a king opposes Caesar. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus and seated him at the judge's bench in the place called Stone Pavement, in Hebrew, Gabbatha. It was preparation day for Passover, and it was about noon. And he said to the Jews, Behold your king. They cried out, Take him away, take him away, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, we have no king but Caesar. And he handed him over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus and carrying the cross himself. He went out to what is called the place of the skull in Hebrew, Golgotha. There they crucified him and with him two others, one on the either side with Jesus in the middle. Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross it read, Jesus the Nazarene, the King of the Jews. And many of the Jews read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, Latin, and Greek. So the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the King of the Jews. But that he, but that he said, I am the King of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four shares, a share for each soldier. They also took his tunic, but the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from top down. They said to one another, let's not tear it, but cast lots for it to see whose it will be, in order that the passage of Scripture might be fulfilled that says, they divided my garments among them, and for my vesture they cast lots. This is what the soldiers did. Standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary of Magdala. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple there whom he loved, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. And he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his home. After this, aware that everything was now finished, in order that the scripture might be fulfilled, Jesus said, I thirst. There was a vessel filled with common wine, so they put a sponge soaked in wine on a sprig of hyssop and put it up to his mouth. When Jesus had taken the wine, he said, It is finished. And bowing his head, he handed over the spirit. Now since it was the preparation day, in order that the bodies might not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for the Sabbath day of that week was a solemn one, the Jews asked Pilate that their legs be broken and that they be taken down. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first, and then the other one who was crucified with Jesus. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. When the soldier thrust his lance into his side, and immediately blood and water flowed out. An eyewitness has testified, and his testimony is true. He knows that he is speaking the truth, that you also might come to believe. For this happened so that the scripture passage might be fulfilled. Not a bone of his will be broken. And again another passage says, They will look upon him whom they have pierced. After this, Joseph of Arimathea secretly discipled Jesus of Jesus for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate if he could remove the body of Jesus, and Pilate permitted it. So he came and took his body. Nicodemus, the one who had first come to him at night, also came bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, weighing about 100 pounds. They took the body of Jesus and bound it with burial cloths along with the spices according to the Jewish burial custom. Now in the place where he had been crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden a new tomb in which no one had yet been buried. 
So they laid Jesus there because of the Jewish preparation day. For the tomb was close by. The Gospel of the Lord. Good Friday liturgy has always been probably my favorite liturgy in the whole church year. From the very first time that I attended the Good Friday liturgy of the pre-sanctified back in the early 70s until today, it is the one that speaks the most to me. It's very brief and to the point, except for the long readings. And it's also one of the oldest liturgies in the church's year. It goes back to the very early days. And it attempts to walk us through the last hours of Jesus' life a way for us to go step by step with him. The actual words of the service themselves are very ancient, although the, the language has been updated quite a bit. And I think if you listen closely to the words, you will find much meaning in what we are doing here. Let us now pray, dear friends, for the Holy Church of God throughout the world, that God the Almighty Father guide it and gather it together, so that we may worship him in peace and tranquility. Almighty and eternal God, you have shown your glory to all nations. In Christ your Son, guide the work of your church, help it to persevere in faith. Proclaim your name and bring your salvation to people everywhere. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us now pray for the Pope, Francis, that God who chose him to be bishop may give him health and strength to guide and govern God's holy people. Almighty and eternal God, you guide all things by your word. You govern all people. In your love, protect the Pope you have chosen for us under his leadership. Deepen our faith and make us better Christians. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us now pray for John, our bishop, for all bishops, priests, deacons, for all who have a special ministry in the church, and for all of God's people. Almighty and eternal God, your spirit guides the church and makes it holy. Listen to our prayers and help each of us in his or her own vocation to do your work more faithfully. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us now pray for those preparing for baptism, that God in his mercy may make them responsive to his love, forgive their sins through the waters of new birth, and give them life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Almighty and eternal God, you continually bless your church with new members. Increase the faith and understanding of those preparing for baptism. Give them a new birth in these living waters and make them members of your chosen family. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us now pray for all of our brothers and sisters who share our faith in Jesus Christ, that God may gather and keep them together in one church, all those who seek the truth with sincerity.
Almighty and eternal God, you keep together those whom you have united. Look kindly on all who follow Jesus, your Son. We are all consecrated to you by our common baptism. Make us one in the fullness of faith, and keep us one in the fellowship of love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us now pray for the Jewish people, the first to hear the word of God, that they may continue to grow in the love of his name and in faithfulness to his covenant. Almighty and eternal God, long ago you gave your promise to Abraham and his posterity. Listen to your church as we pray that the people that you first made your own may arrive at the fullness of redemption. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us now pray for those who do not believe in Christ, that the light of the Holy Spirit may show them the way to salvation. Almighty and eternal God, enable those who do not acknowledge Christ to find the truth, as they walk before you in sincerity of heart, help us to grow in love for one another, to grasp more fully the mystery of your Godhead, and to become more perfect witnesses of your love in the sight of all. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us now pray for those who do not believe in God, that they may find him by sincerely following all that is right. Almighty and eternal God, you created mankind so that all might long to find you and have peace when you are found. Grant that in spite of the hurtful things that stand in their way, they may all recognize in the lives of Christians the token of your love and mercy, and gladly acknowledge you as the one true God and Father of us all. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us now pray for all who serve us in public office that God may guide their minds and hearts so that all may live in true peace and freedom. Almighty and eternal God, you know the longings of our hearts and you protect our rights and your goodness. Watch over those in authority so that people everywhere may enjoy freedom, security, and peace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray, dear friends, that God the Almighty Father may heal the sick, that he will alleviate this great pandemic in our world, that he will comfort the dying, give safety to travelers, Free those unjustly deprived of liberty and rid the world of falsehood, hunger, and disease. Almighty, ever-living God, you give strength to the weary and new courage to those who have lost heart. Hear the prayers of all who call to you in any trouble, that they may have the joy of receiving your help in their need. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. This is the wood of the cross on which hung the Savior of the world. Come, let us worship. This is the wood of the cross on which hung the Savior of the world. Come, let us worship. 
This is the wood of the cross, on which hung the Savior of the world. Come, let us worship. My people, my people, what have I done to you? In what have I offended you? Answer me. I led you out of Egypt from slavery to freedom, but you led your Savior to the cross. My people, my people, what have I done to you? In what have I offended you? Answer me. Holy is God, holy and strong, holy and mighty one, have mercy on us. For forty years I led you safely through the desert. I fed you with manna from heaven and brought you to a land of plenty. But you led your Savior to the cross. Holy is God, holy and strong, holy immortal one, have mercy on us. What more could I have done for you? I planted you as my fairest vine, but you yielded only bitterness. When I was thirsty, you gave me vinegar to drink, and you pierced your Savior with a lamb. Holy is God, holy and strong, holy immortal one, have mercy on us. For your sake I scourged your captors and their firstborn sons, but you brought your scourges down on me. My people, my people, what have I done to you? In what have I offended? Answer me. I led you from slavery to freedom and drowned your captors in the sea. But you handed me over to your high priest. My people, my people, what have I done to you? In what have I offended you? Answer me. I opened the sea before you, but you opened my side with a spear. My people, my people, what have I done to you? In what have I offended you? Answer me. I led you on your way in a pillar of cloud, but you led me to Pilate's court. My people, my people, what have I done to you? In what have I offended you? Answer me. I bore you up with manna in the desert, and you struck me down and scourged me. My people, my people, what have I done to you? In what have I offended you? Answer me. I gave you saving water from the rock, but you gave me gall and vinegar to drink. My people, my people, what have I done to you? In what have I offended you? Answer me. For you I struck down the kings of Canaan, but you struck my head with a reed. My people, my people, what have I done to you? In what have I offended you? Answer me. 
I gave you a royal scepter, but yet you gave me a crown of thorns. My people, my people, what have I done to you? In what have I offended you? Answer me. I raised you to the height of majesty, but you have raised me high on a cross. My people, my people, what have I done to you? In what have I offended you? Answer me. Sing my tongue the Savior's glory, of his flesh the mystery sing, of the blood all price exceeding, shed by our immortal King, destined for the world's redemption from a noble womb to spring. Pray with confidence to the Father in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Brothers and sisters, this is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. In the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, we make it everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O 
Almighty and eternal God, you have restored us to life by the triumphant death and resurrection of Christ. Continue this healing work within us. We who participate in this mystery never cease to serve you. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. Lord, send down your abundant blessing upon your people who have devoutly recalled the death of your Son and the sure hope of the resurrection. Grant them pardon, bring them comfort, may their faith grow stronger and their eternal salvation be assured. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs>